Hola, Pusul, Talofa, and Dumila. Bunch of new ones today. That last one was Sutu from South Africa. One before it was Samoan. Pusul was actually the language of the Mi'kmaq people. Normally I'll go to Google Translate and see if I can't hear how to pronounce hello in your language. I couldn't find that one. Uh, it's rare. So I hope I got that pronunciation right. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm going to fire up the Aircrete Furnace. It's actually been several weeks since I posted a video. Had a lot going on here in the Mills house, one of which was a camping trip with my son Trevor, which was much needed. All right, I'm gonna take a look inside, see what's happening. Here's my bread pan test block here. We'll pull that out in a second. I'm more curious about what's happening underneath the plastic. So that white layer that I saw on the previous blocks is not there, so Nice and gray, feels pretty durable. Definitely not crumbly. I'm not pressing super hard though. This area here where the air was able to get to it a little bit is a little bit lighter, but it doesn't have that really flaky white layer like I saw on that previous stuff. I do have some aircrete over the top of the crucible, which I think I should be able to break out or scrape out pretty easily. Let me give that a shot. Last area here where the spout sticks out. I'm gonna very carefully turn this thing over and see if I can't let gravity do the job. Success. Crucible is no worse for wear. All right, I'm gonna gently peel out this plastic bag and see what we got. Wow. I am happy with this. Couple of air pockets there, but this is the inside of a furnace, so air pockets wouldn't really be the end of the world. It does need to cure a little bit more, so um, I'm going to sprinkle a little water on this and let it soak that up. See, I can see the castable refractory base layer down there. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for several more days and I'll hit that with some water a couple more times. Let's take a quick look at the test block. I didn't do release agent on this, so it's probably gonna crack when it comes out, but it at least give me a sense for what I'm working with here. Haha, <laughs> okay, so cracking was a bit of an understatement. A little bit of the white layer here, but it's not as thick as it was on the other blocks and it doesn't seem to be quite as flaky. So perhaps has something to do with consistency, the quality of the foam perhaps. I've also been working on a propane torch to use to fire the furnace. I need to do some modifications to this one because it won't stay lit, but I didn't want to make you wait. 
So I actually went ahead and purchased a professionally built propane burner for this furnace. So I'm going to get this hooked up to the tank here and tune it and then I'll set up the furnace. I will revisit this burner once I get a little more research done. Propane isn't something I want to fool around with, that's for sure. Loosen up the choke here a little bit and make sure I can slide it. I do have a higher pressure regulator for the propane tank and I can actually adjust the amount of pressure that I want. pressure up on the tank a little bit more to get that flowing well. You can see how the propane heat is interacting with the air creep block here. I'm comfortable enough with operating this propane burner. I'm going to go ahead and set up the furnace with the inlet for the propane burner. Given that it's been about three weeks since I poured this, it's had a much more significant amount of cure time. When I poured the furnace, you may remember that I marked the edge of the bottom. I'm actually gonna go in at an angle so it matches up right with the edge. Then I'll get a vortex of the heat moving around underneath the crucible. I'm using an old hole saw for this and it's pretty much going to destroy it, but it'll get the job done. The hole saw didn't quite reach all the way in, so I just used the iron pipe to kind of chip away at the rest of the inlet. It did, in fact, end the life of this hole saw but it served its purpose. Hey, train's here. I don't actually need the flare for this application, so I'm gonna take it off. Now I'm going to add the crucible and some aluminum. I do need to put a riser block in the bottom, give the flame a nice area to vortex around the bottom of the crucible before it works its way up the sides. And that's actually really where I want the concentration of heat anyways. So it looks like I got about a quarter of an inch all the way around, but I'm actually going to push this to one side, give the air a more of a vortex path up the side of the furnace. Before I light this up, I'm going to prep all of the cans that I'm going to melt by crushing them down. Help me get more of them in the crucible. I'm also going to melt these to-go containers and a couple of balls of tin foil. Eventually this whole chafing dish will get melted as well. Almost all of these cans I collected on the side of the road. That's my secret aluminum mine. The Starbucks is mine. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pull the crucible out, get this thing lit.
drop it back in and make sure that it stays lit. The fire is vortexing nicely around the crucible. This is going to have a top at some point. I'm going to test it today like this and then I'll come back and build the top once I'm sure that the air gap's right. I may need to raise it up a little bit. Right now I'm thinking it's going to work like this. The flames are also starting to climb the sides a little bit higher. That tells me that uh, we're getting higher temperatures inside the furnace. starting to get a little red on the outside. Should start seeing that red moving through into the bottom as well on the inside. I'm gonna stay out of these fumes. One thing of note here, when aluminum gets recycled, it takes 90% less energy versus mining bauxite and creating new aluminum. So even though I am creating some emissions here, if I were creating virgin aluminum from bauxite, I'd be creating a lot more emissions. It also would mean that I'd have to find a mine outside the U.S. There, there are no bauxite mines in the U.S., so the United States mining of aluminum is recycling only. I did a video recently for the Georgia Recycling Coalition. They're a client of mine. I interviewed Nick Mize, the Vice President for Global Metal Procurement, or Novellus, which is the largest aluminum recycler in the United States. And he told me this. The United States is a, a net importer of used beverage cans. It takes about 60 days to recycle a used beverage can and make a new can and have it on the grocery store shelf. It's pretty amazing that we actually are a net importer of aluminum beverage cans from around the world. That puts a little emphasis on why we need to recycle as much aluminum as we can here in the United States. Starting to see a little bit of red glow through the bottom. Should be getting molten soon. Once the aluminum starts to go molten inside the crucible, I'm gonna start adding more cans because they will start to melt a lot faster. So far I'm pretty stoked with how well this furnace is performing. And I'm actually okay with that air gap. It seems to be keeping that heat right up against the sides of the crucible. chunk of construction foam for my form, relief form.
All right, so I've got my form set up here. Now I'm gonna pour the aluminum. Got my face shield on and an apron. Got my face shield on and an apron to deal with any splattering. Don't want that hitting my skin. Put some boots on too. I need to get the proper tool to lift this crucible out and pour it. Um, either that or make one. I will say this foam relief method is not the most sustainable. Obviously making a lot of nasty sooty smoke here. So I will be learning how to do different ways of casting. air creep lock is red all the way through. The side of the furnace that the torch was hitting is also red and it's got some cracks in it. I think that may just be part of the deal. It's a little crusty on the top. I don't think I poured enough of the aluminum. All right, I'm gonna lift it out. Yeah, this is a little more rough than I've experienced in the past. I'm used to a result that looks more like that but I used a different type of foam this time. It may have been more dense. So I'll keep experimenting with this. So the furnace looks to have held up pretty well. It, there are some signs of wear. One interesting note is that the plastic handle on the outside of the bucket did not melt. So I've got some excellent insulation going on with the aircrete. Still radiating heat out of here. <laughs> All right, so I am very pleased with how this furnace performed. I think it would have been a lot more efficient if it had a top. Now that I'm comfortable with the air gap there, I'm going to be making a top to go over the top of this crucible. And I'll probably do a ring around it and then a top over it, two parts. Um, the top will have a hole in it, of course, to allow me to continue to put cans in as the melting process is going on. So happy with the furnace. Obviously my casting skills need some work. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep practicing that and the goal of course is to be able to use my CNC, which will do aluminum, to make some of the fittings for the teardrop camper. So that's how I'm gonna use this aluminum and I'm gonna continue to mine it from the side of the road. I've got several areas around here where people continually throw cans out, so I've got my eye on them, and when I see enough, I stop and pick them up. A quick reminder to tell me how to say hello in your language, and I'll add it in my next video. It'll also be part of my t-shirt that's coming up soon. I'll be starting the design on that in the next week or so, so get me those hellos in as soon as possible to make this shirt. Special thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I really do appreciate the support and the vote of confidence. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share, keep all the great comments and suggestions coming. And I'm not afraid of a little constructive criticism. YouTube has been an amazing learning experience for me as well. And the good news is that even though I am 50, I'm still teachable. It's quite fitting that the train is here to help me close out this video. So I'll see you next Saturday.